my talk covers essentially a technology development using optics to imaging the, the brain, and we focus on mouse and the fish. Uh, one of the takeaways, I think, is that uh, even though we are focusing on doing neuroscience, but the key thing is technology development. And in this area, I think really optics can do a lot in helping neuroscientists understand how the brain works. And only you understand how the brain works, you can understand why the brain doesn't work. So in that case, I think uh, even though technology is not everybody thinks about, but technology is really essential to push this brain research field uh, forward. And in terms of uh, uh, impact on, on society, if you think about this, brain research is really quite fundamental as we're going forward, and how many people has mental problems, and all of these things, we have very little understanding of it. Why you have depression, I don't know, right? So understanding how the brain works is this where the tool comes in, where optics come in. In this case, uh, we are leveraging something really quite simple. Uh, we try to find the best transparency window in the brain and using the wavelength to hit those windows. In that case, we develop lasers to hit those windows to image the brain. And second, we also realized that to imaging deep in a scattering tissue, you've got to be able to form a sharp focus. If you don't have a sharp focus, you can never go very deep in a scattering tissue. So in that case, we leverage the concept which developed uh, almost not 30 years, uh, two-photon microscopy. We add a photon to it to make it more confined so that we can image deeper in a scattering tissue. So in a sense, you know, in retrospect, these are very simple, I would say no-brainers, very simple ideas for looking how the brain works. So I think uh, we have a lucky in a sense that we have a, f a trajectory to follow. Uh, for, two, for example, two-photon was invented about 30 years ago, and now is uh, pretty much ubiquitous in neuroscience. Uh, half the technology group, or half the neuroscientists, probably is using two photon in once upon a time in their life to doing some research. So we have this trajectory to follow. So what I think to do is, uh, for me, is I try to lay out uh, the foundational work, what's good, what's bad about this technology, and I want to uh, work with uh, vendors and manufacturers to develop the instruments. And then we want to look for uh, sort of the alpha users, that's the fearless biologists, to first adapt this technique. I think there are about 20, maybe 30, maybe 40 groups already using it. And once they have their biology results coming out, that'll be much more convincing for the biologist, biologist community to adapt this. Because if they look at me, I'm really a technologist, not a biologist. So once you have the biologists showing real biological results, I think it'll be much more powerful for them to adapt this technique. And then we have the foundational knowledge worked out, the manufacturing ready to jump, jump in to this market. So hopefully it will take off. It's interesting that uh, you know, we can use our technique to push just a little bit deeper than before. I would say maybe a factor of two or so at the most, but the brain is much bigger. We're talking about mouse brain. The mouse brain is already uh, six to eight millimeters uh, thick, and we can only image maybe one to two millimeters deep. So we're still very superficial. I would say, you know, our knowledge of the brain is superficial in, in partially because we can't see very deep. So that's why we're superficial. So there's a variety of techniques people are working on to try to push this even further. But right now, I think it's a very much wide open field how to push further the limits of imaging depth. So I think uh, it's not quite clear how the next step is. But that's also exciting because uh, wide open. I think anybody can jump in, probably a similar starting point because there isn't a really a defined direction to go for it yet.